Hi, my name is Neb Kamus Sen Atumuri, and this is the 13th and the final video for the series Jesus Found in Egypt, his final journeys and transition to a higher life. Lo, Yeshua was convinced that it would be no longer safe for him to remain in Damascus. He went to Nisibis. From that city, he, Yeshua, the mystic Jasper, and his people traveled on to Syria. As he traveled, he carried the Shoba staff, which they call Asa in Arabic, traveling by shadow hour. He slept on the ground with his head on a rock, which was later found to be the same thing he did when he was in Egypt. The time when Yeshua was to arrive there in Egypt, the ruler was being very cruel to the people. Yeshua put himself out to preach and try to save the ruler to change him. When, the, when Yeshua reached near the neighborhoods, Jasper sent his people into the city to tell them and proclaim that Yeshua was outside the city and he was a prophet, a healer, and a teacher. Among them was one called Jacob who offered along with Thomas to warn them, the people of the sea. People abused them and said unpleasant things about Yeshua and his wife. These people were ultimately produced before the ruler and he had their hands and feet cut off. Shamun, one of the ministers, suggested that Yeshua be asked to come and establish his claim, for he was nothing but a magician, and he was bound to fail, fall. Yeshua exclaimed, I have had many people call me a magician. Some say they know this and that about me, but my works are my real miracle. Don't let them use their friendship with you to mislead you. Yeshua then placed the cup of hands and feet next to their bodies and passed his hand over them and said, by the order of Alun Alun El, and they became whole again. During Yeshua's time, Mary Magdalene was with him, and while traveling, he wore a long white jalabia robe Emma, turban, and Kaira Shoba, staff. He spent most of his time walking by foot and always saying he did not want to put a burden on any other beast. Yeshua journeyed onto the land of Mashaka, where the tomb of Shem, son of Noah, was located. There he met other brothers of the Essenes at this point, Yeshua took an oath of silence, setting a seal upon his lips, set out on his journey further. He left this place because the ruler of Nisibian was such a cunning man, and he had his people try to kill Yeshua again. In those, in those days, there were three towns with the name Nisibian or Nisibis, one between Mosul and Syria, the second on the banks of the Euphrates, and the third near Halab in Syria. Traveling back up and over to Lebanon, he continued his journey to Egypt, where he would meet his friend Miskut. In all his journeys, these are the things that Yeshua truly tries to teach the people low. Finally, in Egypt, he, received, he was received as a student. Yeshua was preparing himself for his seven tests to receive the highest degree any man would ever receive. He said, I will gain the highest height of wisdom that any man has ever gained. The 720 degrees 360 degrees of the physical 
and 360 degrees of spiritual. What any man has suffered, I will meet, that I may know how to com comfort those in need. His first test was sincerity. For many days he remained alone in a room in which the light was faint and mellow like the light of early dawn. He read the sacred texts and studied the, hiero the hieroglyphics. A priest entered and told him that he had to save Yeshua's life. For the other priests were jealous and tried to plot with him. He wanted to deceive the other priests. But Yeshua turned him away telling him that he only brought him a lesson in deceit. Thus Yeshua passed the first test and was given the scroll of sincerity. The second test was justice. Again he was put in a chamber for many daylight hours and shadow hours. Two men came to him in priest's attire, each carrying a flickering lamplight. They claimed that they came to help him and that they too had been imprisoned in the same room and they offered him escape. They also claimed that the priests were in actuality criminals planning to sacrifice him. Yeshua told them that no man judged for him and he asked them to leave. Thus he earned the second degree of justice. The third test was faith. It was indeed a hard test. The Hall of Fame was a chamber rich in furnishings and lit up with gold and silver lamps. Impressed with his surroundings, notwithstanding the shelves of books by the master minds, he became absorbed in deepest thought until a priest came to him declaring, Behold the flory of this place, my brother. You are highly blessed. He continues, Few men have ever reached high fame. Why seek for further mystic lights within these dens? Go forth and walk with men. They will honor you. These weird initiations may be myths and your Messiah hopes, but base illusions of the hour. For 40 days, his higher self wrestled with the lower self, and then faith rose, rose triumphant. Yeshua said, the wealth and honor and fame of earth are but the baubles of an hour. Yea, what man does for his selfish will, make no markings on the credit on the credit side of life. Thus he passed the third test, faith. The degree of philanthropy was the fourth test. In the hall of mirth, which was also richly furnished and equipped with everything the carnal heart could desire or wish for, maids in gay attire served men and women who were wild with joy. Yeshua simply watched in silence. Three times during the festivals, the festivities, hungry and destitute visitors knocked on the door of the hall, a man, a woman, and a child, but they were driven away each time, unable to seek his pleasure at the expense of the unfortunate visitor, visitors, Yeshua set out after them. Why? Because they were a part of them all, which is a part of one great human heart. The fourth test, philanthropies, was passed. The fifth test, heroism, was a test of will and faith over material binds. Yeshua's guides placed him in chains in the midst of a den of hungry beasts, unclean birds, and creeping things. The wild beast howled, the birds screamed, and the reptiles hissed. Yeshua asked himself, why do I sit to be bound in chains? None has the power to bind the human soul. Thus strengthened, he rose, and what he thought were chains were merely worthless rags, cords, 
parted at his touch. Yeshua said, if man will stand erect and use the power of will, his chains will fall like worthless rags. For will and faith are stronger than the stoutest chains that man has ever made. The darkness that binds me is but the absence of light, and light is but the breath of Alun Alun L, vibrating in rhythm of rapid thought. And with a will of might, he stirred up the elders, and their vibrations reached the plane of light, and there was light, and the birds, beasts, and creeping things were not. Again, Yeshua appeared before the high priest and received another degree. Heroism. The sixth test was love divine. It is said that few ever get to the sixth test. In the Hall of Harmony, a room filled with musical instruments, among which was a harpsichord. Yeshua sat in a thought mood, inspecting it. A maiden of enchanting beauty entered and made her way to the harpsichord and played and sang songs of Israel. Yeshua was, entran was entranced by her beauty. Af after she left, he thought of no other but her. A few days later, she returned. This time she spoke and laid her hand on his head. He forgot his work, so th thrilled was he with her touch. Again, his ego longed for her. He could not eat or sleep. Then he said, I have conquered every foe that I have met and shall not be conquered by this carnal love. The maiden once again returned, but this time to be spurned by a now wiser student of El Khidr. He was now a private student being taught the mysteries of Egypt. To pass the seventh test required the work in the chamber of the dead to learn the ancient methods of preserving the dead. He gave comfort to those who mourned the passing of their loved ones and offered them help through strengthening words. Yet, despite his age and wisdom, he still had to learn the most important lesson of all. A girl of tender age followed after her grieving mother into the chamber behind the body of another child. As the courier near the door, the child observed a wounded bird in sore distress, a hunter's dart in its breast. She left her position to help the bird after which she returned. Yeshua, amazed, asked the child of her action. She said, a lifeless body needs no help. I can help where there is life. She had taught, she had been taught that grief and hope and fears are reflexes from the lower self and that all emotions are prayers that arise from human loves, hopes, and fears that perfect bliss cannot be ours until we have conquered these. Yeshua said, for days, months, and years, I have sought to learn this high truth that man can learn on earth, and the child had told me in one short breath. Yeshua passed the seventh test. After Yeshua completed the seven schools, he stood before the high priest to receive the scroll of the higher degree. Thus he was told, you are the spirit of Alun Alun El. No man can do more. But Alun Alun El will confirm your title and decree. A dove descended and a voice shook the temple saying, this is Rawah Shil Anu, or soul of Anu. Yeshua at this point was 100 and 20 years old. When Yeshua was in Egypt, he spoke of the events that took place in his life. Thus, they became a part of Egyptian history. The Egyptians called Yeshua Isus, Iasus, 
and Horus, or, he, or Haru. In Greek, he was Huios, simply son. The recorded dates of when he was in Egypt, Egypt vary according to the calendar that is being used. Because of this, it is hard for historians to accurately state the exact time that Yeshua was in Egypt. One historian might find artifacts that would were dated according to the Coptic Egyptian calendar, whereas another historian will find base his findings on the Judaic Gregorian calendar. Dates from one calendar to the next vary greatly. His beloved wife died at age 110, 110, being younger than him by 10 years. She passed 10 years before him. Their surviving four children moved southwards up the Nile to live amongst their own. At, in, that, in, in, the ta in time, their own tribe became known as the Bija. Lo, the book of Revelation records thus, in the 11th degree and the 8th verse, their dead bodies will be discarded in the marketplaces of the great city which is being called a spiritual Sodom and Egypt, the place in which the curious of these two are crucified. This crucifixion at age 120 was the ascension of Yeshua to be met in the skies with a craft to where he, was, he is alive to this day awaiting his return. The great pyramid at Giza, Egypt is a sepulcher, which is a place and monk of the dead. It is written that Yeshua died on a cross. The pyramid is the cross that represents the astronomical symbol power, symbol of the planet Earth. It is one in line of three pyramids forming the Orion constellation. The first pyramid, Orion for Osiris, and the other, Sirius for Aset, and the other, the third, slightly offline and smaller for Haru, bringing heaven down to earth, upon earth. And Yeshua made this statement as Haru the son. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Speaking of all the astrological constellations, Yeshua went to Egypt for the ritual of the opening of the mouth and the reinstillment of eternal life. The four triangles of the pyramid form the cross when looked at when viewing the pyramid from a position above it. When the Romans and the Jews and other Greeks teach that they put Yeshua, son of Mary, to death upon a cross, in actuality, they meant he died upon or on top of the pyramid. What happened to the body of Yeshua is confused with the body of Cleophas. And the same thing that happens to the bodies of all the Phoenician Egyptian pharaohs before. The bodies of all Phoenician pharaohs were mummified, including the body of this deprived pharaoh called Jesus Justus, who is Issa Panthera, Cleophas. After the mummification process, the body of Yeshua, the false Hamashiach of 2,000 years ago, the son of Cleopatra, his body was transferred to India and entombed where it was laid to rest in Kashmir. The image of the beast has been spread worldwide as the image and likeness of Yeshua. This plot was to have all those who did not see him worshipping the image of the beast and giving their lives to it. Yeshua under the name Sananda or Tammuz is in the crystal city in the heavenly skies leaving this state. And he said unto them, You are Keto beneath. I am Anu above. You are of this cosmos world. I am not of this cosmos world. He then, he left them with the promise that he would send another para Paracletus, comforter, 
like himself, another holy person or holy soul, who would not speak of himself, but only that which he hears would he speak. He would have a little book, Al-Quran, which would be sweet, which would be sweet in the mouth and bitter in the belly. This comforter or praised one would glorify Yeshua's holy name, which is Rauh Shil Anu, soul of Anu. This prophesied comforter was none other than Mustafa Muhammad Al-Amin, commonly called the Prophet Muhammad, born 570 AD in Arabia. And after Muhammad, who is called in rhythm Ahmed, would come Muhammad Ahmed Al-Mahdi, and after Al-Mahdi would come Al-Mujaddid, Isa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi, or Dr. Malachi Ziyo. And after Al-Mujaddid, Dr. Malachi Ziyo would come Al-Masih, called Hamashiach, and the Messiah. Thus ends today's video. We hope you have learned something from this video, and we urge you to share this video and to subscribe to the only channel where you will learn true ancient Egyptian mysteries. No more lies, no more guesswork. So share, subscribe, click on the like button below and see you at the next video.